entropy. Okay, so um, the greater the entropy, the greater the entropy, the greater the dispersal of energy, the greater the dispersal of energy, the greater the disorder, the greater the disorder. Okay, so, so basically, if you have, for example, if you have, for example, if you have some ice melting, okay, some ice melting, and you're going from a solid ice to liquid water, okay, the energy, when the ice melts, the energy, the energy is becoming more the energy is becoming more dispersed, which just means spread out, more spread out. The energy becomes more dispersed, more spread out. Okay, so uh, the term entropy is used. So the term entropy, entropy, is used for the dispersal of energy, for the dispersal, the spreading out, dispersal of energy um, within the chemicals, within the chemicals, within the chemicals, um, making up the chemical system. making up the chemical system. Okay, so the greater the entropy, the greater the dispersal of energy, the greater the disorder. So for example, when ice melts, for example, uh, and the particles are moving around, um, it's greater spread of energy. So if you take a solid, so uh, in a solid, the particles are all, um, they're vibrating, but they're all packed very close together in a solid, yeah? In a solid. And then when you move to a liquid, the particles start to kind of move around a little bit more, a little bit more movement in the liquid. And that is an increase in entropy, with entropy increasing. And then when you move to the ga gaseous state, there's a large increase in entropy. And in the gaseous state, the particles are moving around and they're spread out. Um, in the gaseous state, when a gas, yeah? So that's an increase in entropy, an increase in disorder. So low entropy going up to high entropy. High entropy is an increase in disorder. Okay? So um, the actual um, definition. Uh, well, let's actually have a, let's have a look at an example. So. Um, if you take uh, this reaction here, if you take the um, making of ammonia, okay, with nitrogen and hydrogen, okay, you're going from four moles of gas, four, one and three, four moles of gas to two moles of gas, okay, so you have going to a system moving to a system that is less random. Moving to a system that is less random. Or you can say to a system that is more ordered. More ordered. Um, and uh, what we're saying as well is that the energy is becoming more concentrated. The energy is more concentrated. Okay, so the change in entropy here, the change in entropy, so we use the change in entropy, the entropy is, a, is an S, is negative. It's a negative entropy change. Okay, let's, uh, let's do the actual official definition of entropy then. Okay, so... 
The symbol for uh, entropy is a capital S. And if we have the standard enthalpy change, yeah? So the standard is a sign, sorry. So the uh, standard entropy of a substance, the standard entropy of a substance is the entropy is the entropy of one mole of the substance under standard conditions. Which is 298 Kelvin, uh, one atmosphere, or 100 kPa. Right. Um, entropy is always a positive number. It's always a positive number. And the units of entropy are joules per Kelvin per mole. Okay, so if you take that same example, they're all in the gaseous state. And if you're asked to find the entropy change of a reaction, change in entropy, the, en um, the entropy change is the sum, you do that symbol for the sum, the sum of the entropy of the products. Okay, so that's the sum. The sum of, sum of the entropy of the products take away the sum of the entropy of the reactants. Okay, P for products, R for reactants. So if you're asked to give the, uh, to find the entropy change in this reaction, okay, so we would, we need the entropy, so you, you'd get a table and it would give you the entropy of all the different items. So for example, the entropy of nitrogen is a value of 192, the entropy of um, hydrogen is 131, the entropy of um, ammonia, the, the, you'll be given these values, is 193. And the units are all joules per kelvin per mole. Okay, so to work out the entropy change, change in entropy, you've got to, or it's all done under standard conditions, so you've got to sum up the entropy of the products. There are two moles of ammonia. So you need to do two times, because there's two moles of ammonia, two times the entropy of ammonium, which is 193. Then you take away the entropy of the reactants. Okay, so you take away one lot of nitrogen, take away 192, and uh, we've also got three hydrogens, so three times 131. And that's how you work out the entropy change for a reaction. So when you total this, in this case, it's minus 199 joules per Kelvin per mole. That's the units of entropy. Okay, so the fact that it is negative, as I've already said, if the entropy change is negative, that means you're moving to a system that is more ordered. Yeah, or you can say there's less disorder. Okay, so entropy, the higher the entropy, the more disorder. So if it's a negative, it's more ordered, less disorder. Okay, so it is, it's what you'd expect because you've got four moles of gas making two moles of gas. Okay, if you take something like this, if you take a solid, um, let's say, for example, um, a hydrated salt, something like that, a hydrated salt. If you take a solid and you dissolve it in water, are you moving? So you would, when you dissolve it in water, because it's ionic, it splits up into ions. And seven waters. Okay, so you've just taken a solid and you've dissolved it in water and it's split up into ions. Okay, is the system, 
Is this what's happening here becoming more random or less random? So it's there are more. It's it's actually now this, that's a solid packed tight together. Everything's packed tight together, and now it's all kind of free to move about uh, in the solution. So the system is becoming more random. Okay, more disordered. So the entropy change will be positive. So when the entropy change is positive, you're moving to a system with more disorder, more random, the energy is more spread out. Energy is more spread out. But when you're moving to a system that's got uh, more order, the entropy change is negative. Okay, let's just give you one more example. So if you take this, if you take, for example, this reaction, all right, so if you take some solid calcium carbonate, solid calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid, for example, do you know what it makes? Calcium chloride, which is state symbol. State symbols are really important when you're working these things out. Um, plus carbon dioxide gas, plus uh, water, liquid. And then we just got to balance. Okay, now straight away, when you are going from a solid to a gas, as soon as you recognize you're making a gas, then you are increasing the disorder. You've got more disorder. You've got more randomness because the gas can move around, um, freely move around. There's more, uh, the energy, uh, sorry, the energy is spread out more. Energy is more spread out. That is gonna be a positive entropy change. Okay, right. So that's entropy. Okay, so the next part I just want to mention is about the um, uh, Gibbs free energy. Okay, free energy change. So, why do reactions happen? Why do reactions happen? Right, so a, re a reaction can happen a reaction can happen, emphasis on the can, can happen if the products, if the products have a lower energy, have a lower overall energy than the reactants. I'm just going to write R for reactants. Okay, a reaction can happen if the products have a lower overall energy than the reactants okay if a reaction is able to happen we're going to come back to that in a moment okay we use the term if it if it's able to happen we use the term that the reaction is energetically feasible so if it's able to happen we say that it's energetically feasible. Sometimes you may see it called as a spontaneous reaction. You may see that term, okay? So if the reaction can happen, is able to happen, then you'll see it says that it's energetically feasible. Feasible means that it can happen and that it's all spontaneous, all right? You need something called the Gibbs, Gibbs free energy. Okay, Gibbs equation. Okay, so Gibbs. Gibbs, Gibbs equation. And you need to remember this. Delta G, okay, delta G is the free energy of the system, is equals delta H, which is the enthalpy change with the surroundings enthalpy change with the surroundings with the surroundings delta G is delta H minus T delta S okay so delta S is the entropy change and and T 
is uh, the temperature which has to be in Kelvin okay it has to be in Kelvin when you're doing these calculations okay so remember just remember that when you um, convert into Kelvin all you do is you just add 273 onto the degrees and then you'll get your answer in Kelvin yeah so if it says it's 20 degrees that's going to be 20 and 273 is 293 Kelvin and Kelvin is a capital K that's actually a capital K all right so now the problem is here you've got to be really careful with your units right so when you're doing this calculation Delta G the units of Delta H are in kilojoules per mole okay kilojoules kilo means a thousand and that's a small a lowercase k okay kilojoules per mole minus the temperature which is in capital K Kelvin times Delta S which is in joules per Kelvin per mole right so can you see that the Kelvin will cancel out minus there um, and then you've got joules per mole and kilojoules per mole so you need to divide your joules by a thousand so that it is now kilojoules per mole and so that the two um, uh, energy changes match so you've got to not forget to when you're doing your calculations to change the change in entropy change it to divide by a thousand to change it into um, uh, uh, kilojoules okay now for a reaction to happen so for a reaction to happen to be energetically feasible for a reaction to happen oops sorry delta G delta G has to be less than zero less than zero Okay. the overall energy change has to decrease has to be less than zero so the products need a lower energy than the reactants okay um, now even though you do your calculation you do a calculation I'm sure in your textbook there's examples of the calculations when you do a calculation if you get an answer that is below zero so a negative answer for delta G overall energy change then remember what we put here that the reaction should be able to happen should, it is energetically feasible and it should be able to happen but there are limitations sometimes a reaction doesn't happen even though it says it should happen and that's because of uh, because this tells you nothing about the rate of reaction it tells you nothing about the kinetics, which is a, just another word for rate of reaction, study, study of rates. So the reaction may be very slow, right? So the reaction may not happen because it could be a slow reaction um, because, uh, because the um, deactivation energy, because there is a large activation energy so even though you say the reaction delta G you go delta G is less than zero so therefore the reaction is energetic energetically feasible spontaneous it should happen but it just tells you nothing about the rate of reaction and it might not actually happen okay one last thing nearly finished last one so uh, if you You need to be able to predict when a reaction is going to be feasible or not. All right, I'm going to make a little table. Delta H minus T delta S. Is the reaction feasible? Is it likely to happen? All right, so there's different scenarios. Now, the best scenario is if it's an exothermic reaction. Remember, we want delta G to be less than zero, to be a negative number. Now, if this is negative, yeah, and the entropy change, okay, so this is exothermic reaction. This is an increase in disorder, 
increase in disorder okay is that overall going to be a negative number negative negative then that means the reaction will be feasible because overall it will give you a negative negative number for delta G that's the best case scenario exothermic increase in disorder okay if you have an endothermic reaction and if you have an increase in order if the entropy change is negative that is the worst case scenario and that reaction will never happen okay that will not it doesn't matter on the temperature it will never happen so that's the best case situation and that's the worst case right now there's some other ones as well so if we have the um, enthalpy change is negative and then if the uh, entropy change is um, negative okay okay so we've got exothermic here and then this is um, negative means an increase in order okay so it's getting more ordered right this reaction can you see a negative here and a negative and a negative a negative and a negative will make a positive okay so if this temperature is a low temperature then it can still be negative overall if this temperature is low to make this this whole thing um, uh, lower than this it can still happen so this reaction will be feasible but only in low temperature so yes but only when the temperature is low um, and then finally the, the last combination is if you have a positive so that's endothermic um, and then if we have a positive positive okay so if this is positive and then we're taking away we're taking away a positive number to make it negative overall we need this number to be really high yeah we need the t delta s to be greater than delta h and this will happen if the temperature is high so if the temperature is high then the reaction will be feasible but only in high temperature because we need the t delta s to be a bigger number greater magnitude okay than delta h and then it will be negative overall so we need the temperature to be high uh, final thing in this equation this has the greatest effect this is always the largest uh, number the greater magnitude because this is in kilojoules per mole whereas this entropy is in joules per mole oh, sorry kelvin per joules per mole um, but this will have the greater magnitude the biggest effect